Having a baby can cause a strain in any relationship, regardless of how strong that relationship is. Add in sleep deprivation and managing new roles as parents, parenthood can be exhausting. Breastfeeding moms may also feel an additional layer of stress and responsibility when they are the sole or main provider of nutrition for their babies. How can her partner or spouse support her as well as bond with his or her child? I'm Cassidy Freitas, marriage and family therapy intern at the University of California, San Diego, and today we'll be discussing the role of partner support in breastfeeding. This is The Boob Group, Episode 4. Breast milk, it does a baby good. Silly daddy, boobs are for babies. I make milk, what's your superpower? If my breastfeeding offends you, put a blanket over your head. Dairy diva, don't be lactose intolerant. Nursing nature's own breast enhancement. Meals on heels. Whoever said there's no use crying over spilled milk, never had to pump. Breast milk, all udders are inferior. Whatever your point of view, we're here to support your breastfeeding goals. We're the boob group, because mothers know breast. Welcome to the boob group. Broadcasting from the Birth Education Center of San Diego. I'm your host, Robin Kaplan. I'm also a certified lactation consultant and owner of the San Diego Breastfeeding Center. At the Boob Group, we're your online support group for all things related to breastfeeding. Wondering how you can become involved with our show? Visit our website at theboobgroup.com where you can send us comments or suggestions through the contact link. Join the conversation on our Facebook page as well. You can even call the Boob Group hotline at 619 866 Four seven seven five. The Boob Group is also looking for listeners to join our blogging team. If you'd like to share your current or past experiences about breastfeeding, be sure to send us an email. Today, I'm joined by four partners in the studio. Would you all like to introduce yourself, please? Sure. I'm uh, Mark Ranallo. I'm 32. I'm a computer programmer, and I have a daughter who's five and a half months old. I'm Jonathan Wilt. I'm 37. I work in business development, and I have a young son. Carson, 16 months. I'm Buddy Owen. I'm 40 years old. I'm a pastor in England. I have two daughters, a four-year-old and a seven-year-old, Bella and Grace. Uh, My name's Alicia, and I'm 30 years old, and my partner, Danielle, and I just adopted a little boy, Lucian, nine months ago. Well, let's kick off today's episode with an amazing breastfeeding story that is making headlines around the internet. And this story will also be posted on the Boob Group Pinterest board if you want to check it out. So this is the article and just would love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, So Seattle City Council passes ordinance to protect public breastfeeding. So it's already um, against Washington state law to discriminate against public breastfeeding. But the Seattle City Council a couple weeks ago specifically made it illegal for businesses and other entities to ask nursing moms to stop cover up or move to a different location in public areas. So I thought that was pretty amazing that Seattle went that forthright with what they believe in um, respecting a woman's right to nurse in public. And I would just kind of was wondering what you all think about that as well. From my perspective, I, it really changed after Lily was born. Like, I think I would have been a lot more bashful about seeing someone breastfeed uh, before actually seeing it so often. <laughs> now it's just a child eating. I don't even pay much attention to it. I, I can, you can spot it now in public in places where I wouldn't have been able to spot it before, but I don't even think about it really. Yeah. I think that's great, Mark, because if somebody was pulling out a bottle and bottle feeding their baby, you wouldn't look twice, you know? Um, but, and that's the same, it's a source of food, a beautiful source of food and also attachment. So I think it's great, you know, that, that your sort of vision of that has changed. Yeah, I come from a pretty progressive background. And so, you know, my whole family, you know, uh, we're, we're just, you know, about time, you know, it, it, we're, it, this is exciting. And I'm hoping that this legislation will set off a chain reaction to other states. You know, this is this, this is good, you know, because it is it's absolutely, you know, I think it's a, it's a very westernized uh, mentality, you know, to, to be shameful about this. You know, you look at, you know, other other cultures, you know, um, you know, uh, who who have uh, live in, live in uh, much less developed uh, areas. You know, there's just no shame. It's just this is what you have to do. You know, this is your child's survival. Just pull it out and do it. You know, and so uh, hopefully we can, uh, you know, uh, uh, just diminish the shame element of this because that's what it's all about. You know, it's it's other people feeling shameful. You know, so uh, this is exciting. Yeah, let's just hope that it that it that it keeps moving forward. No, I think it's good. Um, we had some friends in Africa, and they would walk around the markets. And their baby would cry, and 
the mothers be screaming at them to just whip it out and throw it over their shoulder, <laughs> right? And they don't need a law to protect that. That's just how they survive. That's where the children get their nutrition. So I think as Americans, as this nation, we do embrace it, you know, a lot more than we do. It's like you said, it shouldn't be shameful. You shouldn't be ashamed of it. It's a natural part of life. And that's how we all got here in the first place. Otherwise, we wouldn't have survived. Absolutely. Buddy, do you notice anything different coming from England? Yeah, I think um, in Europe, there are much fewer inhibitions uh, when it comes to uh, breastfeeding. Uh, I'd never even thought about it till we had kids seven years ago. Um, but being from uh, the southeast of America, I uh, would never have anticipated seeing someone breastfeed in public. Uh, but living in Europe, it's, uh, it's a common thing. Everyone does it. Uh, and rarely do you see anyone even take a second glance. Today on The Boob Group, we're discussing the importance of partner support in breastfeeding and parenting in general. Our expert, Cassidy Freitas, is a marriage and family therapist intern at the University of California in San Diego, as well as a breastfeeding and working mom. Cassidy, welcome to the show, and thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Sure. So just to start off, Cassidy, I've read studies about how a partner's role greatly influences how long a mother will breastfeed for. How valuable do you think a partner's or a husband's support is to a new breastfeeding mom? You know, at the greatest gift parents can give their baby is a loving relationship. Um, the stronger the bond, the better the baby can grow, both emotionally and physically. And, you know, a supportive partner is one of the most important factors in a satisfying breastfeeding experience and breastfeeding success. So it's so important. You know, words really can't even describe how important it is. Yeah, I remember um, telling my that my husband was definitely my cheerleader um, when I was learning to breastfeed our son. Um, I remember one person saying to me that, you know, don't worry about it. It's okay if you give up. You're still going to be a great mom. And my son was a barracuda. And I pretty much cried every time he woke up and uh, started to root around. And so it was my husband who was my main supports person who just kept saying, you can do it and you can do it. And he was the one who actually got on the phone and called a lactation consultant to come over to our house to really help out. Um, and so I know from personal experience how incredible it was to have him as his cheerleader. Um, panelists, how important do you think it was that you provided breastfeeding support to your partner um, or your spouse? I, I think it was. I mean, I, I know it was. A, it was. It was crucial. Be, just because it's such a hard thing with the first child. I believe. You know, um, neither one of us like really knew too much about. I mean, you can read the books, but you don't really know what you're doing until you bring the baby home. And and you know, Amy was. She had that extra responsibility of feeding the child, which I didn't have. You know, and it was kind of one of those things where it's okay, you got to do it, what can I do, you know, and kind of feel like you're running around with your chicken with your head cut off for a while, <laughs> you know, trying to figure out what you can do to help. But um, like I said, it, it's that kind of, you know, just being there it really helps, you know, because I think breastfeeding is probably a pretty easy thing to give up on early on if it's difficult. Yeah, um, absolutely. Especially because uh, pediatricians often, well, you know, here's some formula, you know, you get it when you leave the hospital. I mean, they give it to you. So, you know, if, if you make up your mind, that's what you want to do, then, you know, it's great to have a support system nearby. You know, our, our situation, um, was, you know, it's a bit more unique because, uh, you know, our son was adopted. We got him home right from the beginning. Um, but because, uh, you know, Danielle, uh, who, uh, is nursing Lucian, uh, didn't have a lot of that natural, you know, um, build up, you know, yeah. uh, we, we, it took a lot of work to, to get her to lactate regularly. And, you know, we're so fortunate that we got to work with someone like Robin, but in the beginning, um, especially her flow was, was very light. And so it was, um, it, it was a big team effort. You know, we both had to wake up, both had to prepare the pre pumped milk, you know, in the syringe and, and tape the tube to her breast and, you know, kind of work on this together. So I felt, um, I felt like I, I was playing a bigger role, you know, uh, because, again, the situation was unique. How about the other panelists? What would you say about how important it was for your uh, supporting? Yeah, I think uh, it was very important. Uh, I think, again, it is easy to uh, get away from breastfeeding uh, and, uh, you know, just give a bottle, um, especially when the mom is having a difficult time. Uh, and my wife had a difficult time getting started and, and it was painful and it just really wasn't working. 
uh, and she started to feel bad about herself. You know, I'm, I'm not doing this properly. I, and then, you know, moms are a bit vulnerable at that particular <laughs> stage. Um, and so, uh, you know, they start feeling bad about themselves. They're not a proper mom now because they can't feed properly. And, and I think just being able to be there and say, it's okay. And, you know, even if this doesn't work and you do have to go to a bottle, that'll be okay. Um, but you know, we're, we're going to persevere and, and do whatever we can to make sure it works. And I think it's really important that, um, that the partner is there doing everything they can just to support the mom because it's all about her. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I think going into it, like Mark said, there's just not enough education that you can, you know, get inside your head and really look into reality when it all starts to happen. Uh, I think for me, the biggest thing was learning that you have to teach the child to breastfeed. I mean, <laughs> mm-hmm. You, everyone imagines the baby comes out and he automatically they know what to do and they don't. I mean, going through lactation consultants ourselves, it was such a learning process. And then through that, it just encouraged me to encourage her to keep it up. And I think going into it, you have to be on the same page. So the partner understands they need support, you know, and they need to be there to support them. Um, and it's like Buddy said, yeah, you can really get discouraged quickly. I mean, there's almost like a, a breastfeeding envy in some of those groups <laughs> where some moms are pumping or getting out four to six ounces and she's only getting two, you know, I know. And for Casey, that was her case. And she was like, I'm only getting two. And he was feeding for 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. And I'm like, well, he's getting enough. He's okay. And it was through that process. She learned what I'm providing for my child is enough. That's how I was designed. And not everyone's going to be the same, but I mean, a big part of it was just to encourage her not to give up and to, to use all the tools at her disposal with the, the consultants and friends and the groups. I think that really helped her to be surrounded by other people who are like-minded and also in support of that, um, uh, you know, breastfeeding their child. Panelists, how did you feel? What type of support did you offer to your partner or your wife? Um, you, you've already kind of described, Jonathan, you were talking about really just making sure that you have access to these support groups and to a lactation consultant. But, and Alicia, you were talking about how, you know, helping to prepare these bottles for the supplemental nursing system and things like that. What other ways do you find that you were um, really supportive of your partners during this whole breastfeeding process? Which is being, being that cheerleader, like, you know, we've all echoed here, you know, I mean, because it, it's so hard, you know, it's, it's so hard and, you know. Uh, the self doubt that you see your, your partner experience, and you know, you just you just being that cheerleader, just being that 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 hand on the back. I think um, I, I think was more helpful than you know warming up the milk, than <laughs> taping that damn tube to her breast. You know? <laughs> um, you know, just 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 persevering. Just let and you know, we had a similar thing also, also because you know Danielle was supplementing, so when she would pump, you know, the her amounts were very small, and the breastfeeding envy. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. There was a there was a period where we just stopped going to the group because yeah, it was absolutely. it was really hard, you know. Absolutely. We would, you know, bring him and he wouldn't latch, you'd have trouble feeding and there was this embarrassment and there are these moms with these huge breasts and there's <laughs> milk like spraying across the room. <laughs> and we're like, Why, what's wrong with us? you know? And so um you know, but but you know, we we worked you know, on our own, and and finally came to a point where he was comfortable, where he finally figured out how to latch, and well, we showed we returned to the group. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, I, I kind of the support I kind of gave after a while. The way I was thinking of it was like <laughs> I was kind of like concierge service. You know, <laughs> like when the baby was if 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 she was having a hard time, then. You know, I, I kind of went into the male mindset. I'm like, okay, how do I solve this problem? You know, like, all right, well, we need to talk to a lactation consultant. All right, and here's a list. You know, and I'll go through the list. I'll call them. So yeah. I call them all. And, you know, and, and it was kind of like doing that. So she, she didn't have to worry about doing that kind of stuff. I would do that stuff. Um, it was just whatever she needed at the time so that she only had to focus on one thing. Like, oh, well, is it, you know, do we need to go to the doctor? All right, well, you know, like, I'll make the appointment. We'll go to the doctor. Do we need to go, you know, do you want to go to um, the, uh, you know, boutique at, you know, the hospital? There's the New Beginnings Boutique or something. Mm -hmm. Do we want to go there? Okay, well, then, you know, let's go. Yeah. Yeah, I think a couple of things. I think, first of all, just as you're saying, the the hand on the back, Mm -hmm. you know, the – um, massaging her shoulders just to help her relax when she's getting tense because it's just not working. Um, but also I think um, being there when uh, the baby doesn't need to be breastfed to help take care of baby so that mommy can rest. Um, and I think that often we, we forget how much energy it takes out of the mom uh, doing the breastfeeding. And, uh, and then when the dad can be there to, to do the other things with and for the baby so that mom can rest 
when she gets the chance, uh, I think is really important. Well, I just want to say how impressed I am by all of the partners and you know fathers here i think that you guys are doing such an amazing job concierge service i really really <laughs> like that <laughs> you know i think that i think that there's so many ways that this dyad of mother baby breastfeeding experience can become a triad really i do and i think that as a marriage and family therapist i can talk about all the research that says how important this is and um, how necessary it is for actually for breastfeeding to actually succeed. But I think for me, I want to speak more as a mom right now, a breastfeeding mom. I think that it was not an easy road. And I think for many moms, it's not an easy road. You know, we went through a bout of mastitis. We went through, um, you know, antibiotics that led to thrush with the baby and on, on my breast and cracked bleeding. It's you know, <laughs> feeling like shards of glass being, it was not, it was not an easy road. And I think that the biggest thing that that my husband did for me was just say, you're doing great. He was that cheerleader, you know, and I think that all of you guys spoke to that. And not just a cheerleader, but also a gatekeeper to all of the other opinions that people have because there's there are lots of them, you know. <laughs> you know, maybe you need to supplement. Maybe you need to stop. You know, it's it's not working. And he really served as a gatekeeper. So not only the cheerleader, but the gatekeeper to all the other opinions that are out there. Um, and your role is just so important. Um, I think I remember in the beginning when breastfeeding was painful for me, just having him there, just holding my hand and letting me squeeze it while my toes were curling when she was latching on because it just didn't feel right. And it was it was it was painful in the beginning because we had an improper latch and just being there. Yes, the, the bringing me water and, and making sure I ate all those things were were wonderful. But it was for me, the biggest piece was just the emotional support, which all of you guys and girls spoke to what I think is um, is so important. And Cassidy, since so much bonding does take place during breastfeeding, what are other ways besides bottle feeding once in a while? Um, can a mother and father bond and attach with this new baby? It's a great question, and there are so many ways. Um, first of all, playtime. Dads are great players. <laughs> and you know what? Research actually has shown that Moms do a lot more sort of visual, um, visual play with kids and, and babies, and dads do much more physical and tactile types of play with kids, both of which children need and babies need for development. And on top of that, there's bath time, there's diaper time. Um, speaking of bath time, when I give my daughter a bath, I am very careful not to get water in her eyes. And I was noticing that when my husband got in the bath with her, he would pour water all over her face and she was getting water in her eyes and she was fine. <laughs> Just because I don't like water in my eyes doesn't mean that she doesn't. And so he really, he really was introducing these little things to her that, that I wasn't. Um, and so having him there was, I think, really important for her um, and is going to be important for her both emotionally and physically in her development. Wearing your baby. You know, I know that... It, a lot of times you see women wearing their babies, but men can wear their babies too in slings and carriers around the house, out and about, um, you know, taking the baby for a walk in the stroller so that mom can get some, you know, shower time and some just alone time, um, cuddling your baby. You know, dads and and partners, they can cuddle their baby too. They can be affectionate with their baby too. Um, dads in particular, you know, they have those deep lower voices and they have those sometimes fuzzy chest, um, all of which can be really intriguing and comforting to a child. Um, relieving the baby's gas, you know, so there's the football hold. You know, um, I know my husband used to always um, drape our baby over his um, arm when she was gassy and his, you know, big hand on her belly and just kind of push on it and you'd be surprised how quickly the gas, <laughs> the gas <laughs> was, released. <laughs> was released and helping to get to sleep. So this is kind of for, for everybody. If you have a breastfeeding partner or wife, then a lot of times when the baby gets so exhausted and mom's holding the baby, they're, they're rooting and they're looking for the breast, but they're not really wanting the breast. So sometimes it's a great opportunity for dad to take baby at that moment and, you know, uh, help rock the baby to sleep um, because they don't have that smell. They don't have the breast. They don't have the smell of the milk. Um, and it can really help ease the child and baby into sleep. So there are, there are so many ways that dads can get involved. 
Terrific. Well, when we come back, we're going to be discussing ways in which the breastfeeding mom can also Mm -hmm. offer support to her partner or husband and keep those lines of communication open after the baby's born. So we'll be right back. All right, and we're back. So, obviously support is not a one-way street in a new family, and while a new mother needs encouragement and assistance as she enters her role as parent, so does her partner and spouse. Uh, Panelists, I'm going to open this up to you. What type of support or comfort did your breastfeeding wife or partner offer to you when she was breastfeeding and when maybe you were offering that first bottle to your child? Um, uh, You know, Amy, she, she... Was very supportive, like uh, much like a cheerleader, kind of like we talked about. I was being to her, but it, w- it really made me feel good when you know I was offering the bottle for the first time, and you know I got the baby to drink, like you know some, you know at the time I didn't think it was a lot of like an ounce and a half or something. You know it was very small, but uh, you know it was the first time that she decided to drink some out of the bottle, and it was like you know high fives all around. You know like <laughs> ooh that was awesome. You know and then. You know, every time I do give the bottle, you know, the bottle of oh, she drank, you know, six ounces. Wow, you did. That's phenomenal. You know, like that's f- spectacular. So, you know, it, it made it feel like I, you know, was capable of, you know, providing food for my child and <laughs> doing that kind of care was, you know, was, was pretty cool. Uh, you know, um, we it was a long, long time coming uh, for, for us to get our son. And so when I think back on those first couple of months um even now you know he's nine months tomorrow um danielle and i seem to do everything together if 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 she was breastfeeding or if i was you know finger feeding with the syringe um we were always up with each other even though one could try to sleep you know we just didn't want to take any time away from this miracle that we you know had been working for so many years to, to, to to have um and that was you know that was that was really nice and it, it felt like we were both equal you know always throughout this um it wasn't until really recently maybe in the last couple of months when i realized that he tends to favor her <laughs> um just because you know um as our wonderful acupuncturist Jamie said you know um she's the fridge <laughs> you know and you know you'd be mad if your fridge just walked out of the room too um so but but in the beginning i mean we we really did everything together you know um Danielle would be next to the glider while i was feeding him you know and you know when she was nursing you know i would sit up and just be awake and just stare at him and just you know rub his feet um but you know, I I think the support thing now from from her is is, on, is more of a recent thing. You know, just reassuring me that you know he he doesn't love me less. You know, <laughs> she's just the fridge, and and that's that's what it what it's all about. And so, um, my 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 ego's fine. I mean, I, I, I get it. You know, um, but yeah, that's more of a recent thing. Yeah, I think like human instinct when you see your wife or your partner feeding, and you see the baby's immediate comfort, and then they pass them off to you. And he's screaming his head off because <laughs> you're not the person he's used to. Um, you're like, well, I just can rely on my wife then. But then you realize your role is to also assist them. And it, it it's easy to fall back into, well, here, you take them. You know, you got the equipment. I don't. So, you know, you got the goods and I don't. Like like you said, <laughs> you're the fridge. Go. But because uh, of that, that comfort level. But it was nice that she was kind of walking me through the steps. Hold them this way. Try the bottle this way. Um you know, try to, she was trying to coach me, which, you know, I didn't think would really be necessary. Like, oh, I just have to hold it, give them the bottle. You know, you see it happen all the time. But yeah, it's a whole process. And uh, I think she slowly kind of like, we're stroking my ego. Like, look, you can, we have to do this. It's not just me. It's going to be a partnership all the way through. So I need to learn. And um, as hard as it was, you know, I think as a guy, you're kind of macho, like, well, I can do anything. You realize that you, you're limited pretty early on you don't know you don't have the skill set yet yeah um but you, you know they do they she did coach me slowly and I, and I learned how to calm them down and how to wear them and how to soothe them and yeah there were late nights and he was screaming at me but we got through it you know, <laughs> and we still do so yeah much the same I mean I couldn't wait to be a dad I was so excited about being a dad so um you know once we had uh, grace and Alex was breastfeeding we we took every opportunity we could for me to do whatever I could uh, to help out, but also just to bond with grace. And, um, so whether that was bottle feeding or just soothing in the night when, 
uh, Alex needed to sleep or whatever it was. She was she was wanting me to be as much of a part as I could, and I took every opportunity uh, to do that. That's terrific. Cassidy, what else would you add to this list of how breastfeeding moms can support their partners? I think you guys all touched upon, touched upon some really great things, and I think that a big piece of this is we have to remember that when, when a baby comes out, yes, they have that sucking reflex, but breastfeeding is a learning process. You guys touched upon that a little bit earlier. The bottle is a learning process too. And so as, as, a, as, a, as the breastfeeding mother, I think that it's really important to just allow that process to happen. I think it's really easy to micromanage. And, and as, as you had shared earlier, you know, um, Jonathan, that, you know, it was really helpful, the tips that she gave you and that she was your cheerleader at the same time, probably wouldn't have been as helpful if she was like over your shoulder, like, you're not doing this right. You're not doing this right. Do this, try this, do this. So just kind of allowing the process to happen and, um, you know, understand that dad's, dad's going to have his own way too, you know, and it's a learning process for dad and for baby, just like it was for the mom while they were learning how to breastfeed. Yeah, that's one thing that I, some really good advice that I had received from a few friends of mine was that um, to not micromanage my husband, because I'm really um, good at that. (laughs) And um, I remember that um, because my son was born in July, fantasy football started at the end of August. And so Sunday was my day to go. And so I would pump and I would leave a, you know, bottle or two for my husband and my son. And I would go out. And my husband never called. You know, he took care of it. I got home. He just said, yeah, he ate this. He slept, whatever. But I didn't ask what he did. Um, and because of that, you know, my kids are now almost seven and five. And um, I can go out of town to a conference for five days. And I know that my husband, you know, I don't know if they're going to have in and out a couple times. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. You know, they're safe. They're healthy. They had a really good time with dad. Right. They bonded. And so I think it's really important that the advice that I received was, back off and let my husband or, you know, allow your partner in this process to figure out their own way. And Cassidy, like you had explained too, like maybe pouring water on top of your daughter's head, she actually enjoys right. where you would have never tried that. And right. I think that that um, is a really valuable lesson. Right. And it, it's all about building that confidence. You know, when you're a new breastfeeding mom, if you have somebody always telling you what to do and how to do it, that confidence isn't allowed to develop and sort of flourish. And same thing goes for dads who's, who's trying to give the bottle or for any caretaker. So partners, you know, grandparents, nannies, for all of these people that are potentially going to be, you know, giving your baby a bottle from time to time, allow them to do it. Just like we were allowed to breastfeed, you know, and we were allowed to have that process, that learning process, that learning curve, you know, because it doesn't happen right away and just allow it to happen so that that person can build the confidence that, you know, is necessary that that the baby's also going to pick up on. Well, thank you so much, Cassidy, for your insight into this important part of breastfeeding, which is partner support. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Here's an email we got from one of our listeners. Hi, boob group. I'm currently breastfeeding my 11-month-old baby, and my family keeps asking if I'm going to wean her once she turns one year old. I just listened to your episode about how breast milk still has nutritional value after a baby turns a year old. I was wondering where I can find articles about these benefits so that I can share them with my family members next time they bring up the topic. Do you have any recommendations? Sincerely, Rebecca from Washington. Hi, Rebecca. Thanks for your question. Yes, there are many resources online that discuss the nutritional value of breast milk after the first year of your baby's life. I have a few on my website, actually, which is the San Diego Breastfeeding Center.com, and it's a great place to start. Our article, Does Breast Milk Have Nutritional Value After a Year?, lists a bunch of statistics from a research article by Dewey in 2001 in the Pediatric Clinics of North America Journal. This article states that in the second year of life, 448 milliliters of breast milk provides 29% of your baby's energy requirements, 43% of protein requirements, 36% of calcium requirements, 75% of vitamin A requirements, 76 of folate requirements, 94% of vitamin B12 requirements, and 60% of vitamin C requirements. That is a lot of nutritional value in that amount of breast milk. Next, Kelly Mom has a huge list of research articles on her website, on a page titled Breastfeeding Past Infancy. I'll plug this in this. Here you can find resources about the nutritional and immunological benefits of breast milk past okay. a year, plus all of the additional benefits breastfeeding has for both mom and baby after a year. After scanning over these 
50 plus articles on her website, you should have all of the resources you need to convince your, bre- your family members that breastfeeding beyond a year is a tremendous gift you can give to your baby. Lastly, I thought you might enjoy connecting with other moms online about their experiences breastfeeding beyond infancy. A few of my favorite articles are Enjoy It While It Lasts on the Slacker Mom blog, Yes, She's Four and Yes, She Still Breastfeeds on the Normal Like Breastfeeding blog, and The Last Time That Never Was on the Black Tating blog. I hope that these resources were helpful. Thanks so much for your email, Rebecca. Thank you to all of our listeners. I hope you'll visit our website, theboobgroup.com, and our Facebook page to offer your ways in which your partner supported you during this breastfeeding journey. If you have any questions about today's show or the topic we discussed, call our Boob Group hotline at 619-866-4775, and we'll answer your question on an upcoming episode. If you have a breastfeeding topic you'd like to suggest, we'd love to hear about it. Simply visit our website, theboobgroup.com, and send us an email through our contact link. Coming up next week, we'll be discussing partial breastfeeding when supplementation is needed. Thanks for listening to The Boob Group, because mothers know breast. This has been a new mommy media production. The information and material contained in this episode are presented for educational purposes only. Statements and opinions expressed in this episode are not necessarily those of new mommy media and should not be considered facts. While such information and materials are believed to be accurate, it is not intended to replace or substitute for professional medical advice or care, and should not be used for diagnosing or treating health care problem or disease or prescribing any medication. If you have questions or concerns regarding your physical or mental health or the health of your baby, please seek assistance from a qualified health care provider. Hey, mamas. Don't forget to check out Mighty Moms. It's our online community built for new moms just like you. Not only can you connect with other moms, but you can also join us backstage for special mom-only online events. And you'll also be notified when we're recording so you can join us as a special guest. Visit our website, newmommymedia.com, and click on the Mighty Moms banner. It's free. That's newmommymedia.com. See you there.